Let's talk about the government deficit for a minute. We did this the other day a little bit. We said when you talked about the budget for the government, they had money coming in and money coming out. What term did we use for the money they're bringing in? The federal government. Taxes. Taxes. I see I'm out of focus, more so than usual. That's better. So we had taxes coming in, and what were the forms of money going out, or what we might call disbursements? Transfer payments. Transfer payments and government spending. And government spending. So in our budget, we always compare taxes to spending and transfers. And we put dollar amounts to them. And if we find out, for example, that we have $100 in taxes coming in, we have $100 in spending, and we have $40 in transfers, what's going on? We are disbursing more than we are collecting. We have a deficit. Everybody okay with that? Now, in this case, $40 deficit. And what happens to that deficit? We pay interest on the money we borrowed every year. And when the bonds that we sold to finance the deficit, when they come due, do we pay them off? Yes, we do. How do we pay them off? Where do we get the money? We go back and borrow some other money. It's kind of like, well, my Visa card has got to be paid off, but I'll just charge that to my MasterCard. And we perpetuate the debt, and in fact, it grows over time. And so one of the concerns has always been, somewhat the size of the deficit. The deficit is per year. But of, of more concern, perhaps, is the debt. The debt is the total of the accumulated deficits. And the debt is very large, 17 trillion plus. One of the concerns for the last 10 or 15 years has been this debt's getting too big. As a result, our government's getting too big, and it's wasting too much of that money. And while you and I may die tomorrow, our children will still have to pay for that. And so one of the big arguments was our debt is too big. But let me ask you a question. If, if I told you I was $3 million in debt personally, you think that would be a lot for me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Knowing what I make at Santa Fe? Yeah. $3 million in debt for me would be a hell of a lot. I live in a house that's probably worth $150,000 today, not a $3 million house. Okay? So if $3 million sounds like a lot of debt, what if I told you, oh, oh, and by the way, um, when my parents passed, I inherited a trust fund that's worth $72 million. Would you say I'm heavily in debt with $3 million? No. No. So the amount of debt in its, I, I didn't inherit the trust fund, by the way. <laughs> but when you look at the absolute amount of the debt, how many dollars, that's a meaningless figure. Because you have to compare it to what? GDP. You have to compare it to your ability to repay that debt. In my case, compare it to my income or my wealth. In our country's case, compare the debt of our nation to our GDP. And it has grown very large. It's not nearly as large as many countries. And in fact, it is gradually coming down, only very slowly. But here's the problem. Some people say, you need to reduce the debt. What's the other way to improve your financial position? Increase GDP. And I'm not saying you should do only one. But instead of worrying about reducing debt, maybe you should also in, ask yourself, what can we do to increase the GDP? In this case of the United States. And so what this does, coming from the, the question about budgets and deficits, takes us back into something we've talked about before, called stimulus 
versus austerity. What's the argument on stimulus and austerity? Anybody recall? Stimulus is like borrow money, increase spending. Stimulus is kind of down here. Let's, in, let's increase the size of the economy. Well, to do that, you're going to wind up going further into debt, at least at first. What's that? What's austerity? Don't borrow money. Austerity says we need to shrink the size of the government and shrink the size of their spending and reduce the debt. And by the way, you can't do them both at the same time. They are mutually exclusive. Okay? What happens if you take the austerity approach? You reduce spending, especially. Maybe you raise taxes, but in most cases not. And what does this do to the economy? It recesses or, or slows down the economy. So this would be your austerity. And this is the key phrase. It's very similar to our discussion about crowding out. If you do this in a recession, what happens? You worsen the recession. The recession gets worse. There were still people that strongly advocated this, and they introduced an interesting term. They introduced a term, another color here, called expansionary <coughs> austerity. And it had to do with expectations. It's very similar to crowding in. Their argument was, if you reduced your debt, it would stimulate the economy. Why would that stimulate the economy? The argument was that your people in your economy, your business people, your citizens, would look at that and say, oh, the government's being very, very responsible. That means we'll have a brighter future. Let's go spend more money. Now, if you believe that, I will bring you a bottle of snake oil next class and give it to you for not, not more than $45. Yeah, probably not. There won't be a hell of a lot in it. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you believe this, ask yourself what happens when austerity causes a greater recession and people are losing jobs. What happens to spending? It decreases even further. And to, argument, and to argue that it's going to be expansionary, you need to, you need to stop smoking that stuff. Because you'll believe anything. But there was a, a very strong element of economics that, all, that bought into that whole idea. And in fact, they bought into it in trying to bail out Portugal, Ireland, Italy, Greece, Spain. They were all in a terrible shape with high debt. How did their economies do? They, they got worse and worse and worse. And it has taken years for Ireland to start coming out of it. And Spain, they're still fighting to get out of it. Greece is a, a total disaster. So once again, if you study history, you see patterns that repeat themselves. If you study psychology, you begin to understand why people will believe just about anything if it sounds good enough. Because they want to. Yeah. And so how do you, instead of reducing debt, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, Let's find every bit of government spending that we don't need and get rid of it or use it in a better way. How do you increase GDP? 
to, huh? How do you increase government? Well, how, government spending will increase spending, but you know, I, I can increase government spending by giving you a free college education, or I can increase government spending by building homes for the homeless. Which one's going to do the most to increase productivity? Education. Arguably, education. My point is, you can borrow money, and you can grow the economy, and you can reduce this ratio. But the only way you can do it is if you spend your money wisely. You invest your money, you don't spend it. You invest it in people's productivity, in research and development. Okay? That's why I'd like to hear more from Trump and Clinton. I've heard a good bit from Sanders that I thought was pretty good, but I'd like to hear more from Trump and Clinton on what are you going to do in that vein for the economy. Performance by doing some of that, I, I, I happen to agree with you that if, uh, if you're not performing, stop wasting our taxpayers' money in your own time. Like if you're a good student, you, had, you either, I mean, if you keep above a three, as, as long as we limit the number of courses you can drop. Yeah. I agree we need to be able to drop courses because sometimes things go wrong in our lives. But when you see a pattern of dropping and not completing, you lose your eligibility. Other than that, I think tuition reduction for high performance, I think, is a good idea. Yeah. And that's pretty much what they do now with financial aid. You have to have a certain GPA. You have to have a certain percentage of your classes that you've um, not dropped your... That you com you have to complete two thirds of your classes, I think it is, mm -hmm. with a, what a, even a D or is, is a, I don't know. Exactly. And, and, and what that's trying to do is to eliminate the free riders, the people that are. And, and I had I had an adjunct come to me one year, one term. He said I had nine people my first night of class, night of class, night class, to made 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 real sure that I checked them off as attending, and I never saw them again. They were just making sure they were recorded, they picked up their financial aid, and they disappeared. Now, I don't know whether we're going to find them. I don't know whether, if we did, could we get our money back? How much is it going to cost us to yeah, find them? have to pay those classes back if they don't. Attend. Well, if, if you find them. If it's a Pell Grant, you don't have to pay But if it's a grant. And if they find them. So, so the idea of paying for college by you know the public has got some real issues, but it's also got some real benefits. Do you, any of you know anyone personally? who has graduated college and has a serious financial burden because of their student debt. Yeah, that's just incredible. And who's benefiting from that, by the way? No. The banks. Because you can never get away from that debt. Yeah, that was one of the most unfair things I think we ever did to our young population. Sir. I've got a question, like, what, talking about debts, what if a country like America owes a debt to say China yeah and then you show that you can pay the debt mm -hmm. how would the Chinese make you pay the debt well they could come through our court system and demand payment and if you can't what's if you payment? can't then you can't would they like they, they could do whatever they want yeah that's just like if you don't pay me my rent for my apartment then you have to I can I have to go after you I can take you to court but if you say well I don't have any money anyway mm -hmm. what am I gonna do Whenever you loan money again, they're gonna either they're not gonna lend you money or they're gonna raise your interest. One of the things I do for people who rent from me is I want a credit report and a work history and references. It's just like getting a job. Question, comment? Uh, you said something about debt after school and money. I was just gonna add in my sister went to chiropractic school and she she and her husband are both hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt. And they're never going to pay it off, but they're going to, if you make the payments for 20 years. It's forgiven. It's forgiven. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a Which is a smart thing to do yeah. uh, on the part of the government or whoever is loaned them the money. What, because like Obama. Be huh? Is that what Obama implemented? The forgiveness? He has tried to. A forgiveness okay. package. I don't know whether what the status on that bill was or whether it got through or not. What's today? Tuesday still? Yes. Still Tuesday. Don't forget to vote. That's right. Tuesday, don't forget to vote. Check the uh, political reports Wednesday, and we'll talk about some of that on Thursday. When's the next exam?
next week. You have to test the practice quizzes open until the 21st. So I'm assuming it was next week. That was going to be one of my questions. But are you planning for it to be next week? I'll have, have to look at that. We're going? We should be on schedule. Huh? So if the test is on the 21st, Monday, a week from today? That's the day you have the practice quiz open until that morning? Yeah. They close at 7 on the day the exam begins. Okay. Monday. See you Thursday. Yeah.